Hey guys, it's Alex with Hammond Watch. Uh, here today with my SKX175. And uh, if you're not familiar with the reference, uh, it may be a little bit confusing uh, because it is the same exact watch as the SKX009. Uh, it shares the same sizing. Uh, it's a 42 millimeter case, 13 and a half thick, 46 lug to lug, 22 millimeter lug width. Uh, they both have the, the same crown positioning, the same ISO diver certification. Uh, Luma bright and fully printed dials and the 7s26 movement uh, That gives you a 40-hour power reserve, but doesn't hack or hand wind and you're looking at a, a minus 20 plus 40 seconds a day variance The difference between them is the the markets that they're meant to serve uh, the SKX 009 uh, is a worldwide uh, watch uh, they sell it all over, you have the, the J and K variants for the, the made in Japan version. And uh, you, you've probably noticed if you've gone hunting that you'll run into these 175s or, or these SKX models that say Malaysia or Singapore down at the bottom. And I wanted to shed a little bit of light on, uh, on what that means. Now the 175 is specifically made for the US. Um, I've heard it called the North American market watch. Um, I refer to it as the U.S. because it's got a couple of kind of key details because of the U.S. Uh, Federal Trade Commission. Due to the FTC's uh, strict guidelines on imported goods on the U.S. specific 175s, uh, you'll always see uh, Movement Singapore on the bottom of the dial or Movement Malaysia. And, and then you'll see the same thing on the case back just above the serial number. Uh, if you're ever looking at, at old or trying to find specific year SKXs, um, make sure that those two countries match. I've seen quite a few Frankenstein watches out there. But the difference between uh, the Malaysia and Singapore, it's just timing. Uh, the, the Singapore dials are, are a little bit older. See, Seiko had a, a manufacturing facility in Singapore uh, all the way up until 2006. Um, in the middle of 2006, they started moving everything over to Malaysia, which saved them money on labor costs. And it helps out when you're dating watches, because if you've ever gone online and tried to find the specific year your SKX was manufactured, you'll know that you have to go in and enter the serial number. And uh, a lot of times you end up with you know, kind of two options. Like it'll say your, your watch was manufactured in you know, 1997 in April or 2007 in April. And with the Singapore watches, you're, you're kind of afforded the luxury that you know it would be the prior uh, because everything had stopped before the end of 2006. So even late model, uh, you know, 1996 or 2006 Singapore dials are, are very likely to be more the, the first year uh, than snuck out here at the end. Uh, I think it adds a, a good deal of interest to the watches. You know, I, I definitely don't think that the SKX is going to be some big collectible one day and, and that the prices for them will shoot up. Uh, there's simply too many of them and still too many new uh, that, that haven't been sold yet. Um, but in trying to buy watches that everybody has and that you like the look of but you want something a little bit different, uh, I think the 175s offer kind of a unique opportunity. Uh, there's obviously less watches made specific for the U.S. market than there were for uh, worldwide sales. Um, and then on top of that, there, there's probably fewer Singapore dials than there were Malaysia, uh, simply because they only had 10 years of production in, in that country. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe learned something about the differences between the 175 and 009. Um, Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. We're putting out videos weekly. A lot of times they're kind of uh, quick format views at, at different watches, just giving you some really well-lit shots uh, on wrist and the general specs so that you kind of know what you're getting into. Thank you. See you in the next one.